Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be Exit versus Kiko, the first game of the Losers match. It's going to take me a while to get through Hasu League this time because I think the best of threes or whatnot. And I think actually in the BSL casting channel, everybody else, they have just more time. By the way, it looks like we're seeing potentially a form of cheese or maybe just an early scout from Exit. He's immediately moving an SCV out. He's starting as the pink Terran, by the way, at the 9 o'clock location. 3 o'clock location, we have Kiko starting as the red Terran. I'll try to keep an eye on that. This is on Heartbreak Ridge, which... This was in the map pool a while ago, and it I feel like it was in the map pool for a long time. Maybe my brain... This is... I don't know why, but, like, this is coalesced in my brain with Fighting Spirit. By the way, there's a Fighting Spirit tournament. Fighting Spirit was the map that everybody got sick of. They played it so much. It's kind of like the what Eclipse was back in the day. But anyway, Exit, moving that uh, SCV. I'll try to hurry up as far as what's going on in this map. So you've got a natural expansion right here, a ramp that leads up all the way uh, into the back corner. You can empty that mineral field that leads kind of this... Uh, area back here potentially a third right there some minerals in the middle of the base with a double gas and it looks like he's gonna yeah he's gonna build a barracks on the high ground very very cute and also you can see these spokes uh, across the middle of the map and that's kind of the interesting feature is, is you have to be careful walking up and down these areas it makes a particularly interesting map as far as uh, in my opinion Terran versus Zerg play but in TVT look at that wind it can also be interesting just because of the tank engagement. So anyway, exit, building a barracks on the high ground. So the next question to follow this up is when does Kiko scout exit? And I actually like exit doing this. Kiko sometimes can be an overly, how do I put this? Kiko, I think is very strong when he's aggressive, but sometimes he can be overly cautious. And I think that's the weak, that's both the strength and the weakness in his play is sometimes opponents will run into him and he can just whittle them down and end up winning a match. I feel like Kiko's macro tends to be a little bit, how do I uh, exit play style comparatively? He just adjusts extremely well to what his opponents are doing and gets very, very good eyes uh, or what in what he's seeing, he does a really good job adjusting. Um, I feel like at times his build orders end up languishing as a result of that, however. And oftentimes what also ends up happening is he ends up uh, being behind a bit in macro sometimes. I think because potentially because he's trying to keep his options open, I'm not entirely sure. Kiko knows something's up now because he sees the supply dip, he sees the gas being grabbed and sees absolutely nothing else. There's already two Marines on the high ground. They're starting to move the low ground. They're going to be able to beat this single Marine out. But keep in mind, this is going to be two SCVs and two Marines inside Kiko's base with a close reinforcement point working on that SCV actually managed to sneak out. Several SCVs pulling off the line. So this is going to be six SCVs. They're getting right on top of those Marines. A great split and able to do damage right there. This bunker trying to be built urgently in that back corner that's not going to end up happening so this scv is getting wiped out that bunker is going to have to be canceled these marines trying to pull off and kiko with a fantastic pull looks like two scvs down comparative corner but i feel like kiko got the better end of that exchange all the way around so he's got that barracks up he's got that refinery uh moving this is going to have to be lifted off kiko actually has potentially Potentially has an aggressive advantage. He's going to move out with his three Marines and two SCVs. However, there's a factory building behind this for exit. Now, keep in mind, he doesn't have any Marines. And Kiko holding short. It's a it's a big distance to cover on this map, granted. And it looks like he's just... So this... Ah, come on, Kiko. This is where I was... Uh, what I was talking about in some of these situa situations. I feel like if he had pushed up with those Marines, I guess he doesn't know where what situation he's in. Uh, exit just with the two Marines. I feel like if he continued to produce Marines and press forward, he actually might have gotten a lot of done against Exit. Exit actually using this barracks to go ahead and get a bit of scouting information. I would not be shocked to see Exit produce a Vulture initially. And I'm, I should say, I'm not rooting against Exit here. Actually, Exit, one of my favorite players because he was a Chobo League champion. I want to see how deep he gets into Hasu League as a turnaround. Uh, just to say, but... Just want to preface that before anything. And Kiko following this up with a double factory. I like that. Okay, now... Now... I'm back in it. I like seeing aggressive Terran plays, I guess what I'm trying to, to get at more than anything. Exit trying to block this. That SCV getting in is going to see a factory and another factory alongside. This is... Uh, it's interesting because it's the current Vulture meta going through for the three factory Vulture rapidly. Feels like it plays very well on this map. Again, because you can see the, the ridges and the I guess that's why it is Heartbreak Ridge. But the mines ending up on the high ground because there's lack of vision, oftentimes what they'll do is, is if you can get mines up there, it really devastates anything, but it can really bog down the mid game, which actually, again, I, th I feel like might play to Kiko's favor as far as map selection. I'm wondering if Kiko opted to choose this map 
uh, overall, because if you can get mines down in the mid game on this field, you can really turn around and just kind of be a little bit more passive with macro, but that also means you have to maintain a superior vulture count. Looks like we're seeing that armory follow up, which usually means there's a couple of Goliaths to follow, some Marines pressing forward, exit, continuing with that classic aggression. The barracks floating forward to go ahead and scout what he's up against. He's going to see the two vultures. You can see Kiko playing a little bit more defensively. He followed up with the two factories, saw the two factory in kind, and then he just moves that vulture up to the high ground. Defensively, neither player really in a position to take their natural expansion. Currently exit with a small SCV lead, despite going with that uh, early proxy barracks. Two Goliaths being produced behind this. So it's you got two vultures, two Goliaths. It looks like two Goliaths on the opposite side of the map. And exit with a more aggressive position, which potentially is going to... So Kiko, if he moves up positionally and gets aggressive, he might be able to take some of these units down and end up kind of getting one of these, like, I am closer, therefore my units end up in more cohesive formation, therefore I am whittling your units down because I'm getting better engagement situation. Although the Sparrows might get wiped out as well. Exit, doing a good job scouting with this and just keeping it on the perimeter. Two machine shops being dropped. Opposite corner, that barracks getting assailed by those Goliaths. And I don't know that Kiko got equivalent amounts of information. But you can see Kiko just moving up in the exit very wisely. And this is what I talk about. Exit has just S tier. So despite everything else, despite the builders whatnot, he has S tier game sense. So just peeked up with that scouting information, got eyes on the barracks, realized he would end up losing a heads up engagement. So repositioned and get it, got his troops back together. However, looking to get back on top of this ridge is just going to catch the edge of this troop. Unfortunately, his army split. He's going to end up losing his barracks, which might be a small disadvantage early. Trying to get his... This is another problem with Heartbreak Rage is you have to be careful with your units to kind of keep them grouped up and cohesive. Another SEV actually making it straight through the lines is going to see that natural expansion going up. Let's see if this triggers Kiko to get aggressive. Kiko has dropped two machine shop and is just peeling out... Uh, they're just filing out a bunch of tanks. And this is where some mines behind this on the high ground might play really well for exit just to try to slow this army down. Because even Goliath's going up into this lack of vision area. Sometimes the mines can just uh, trigger. But the two tanks joining up exit with equivalently, it looks like we got, what, three Goliaths? Let's get a full count on this. We got five vultures, three Goliaths, two Marines, and an SCV. Versus three vultures, two Goliaths, four Marines, and two siege tanks. The advantage is to Kiko because of those two siege tanks, but it is possible with a decent amount of micromanagement and a high ground advantage that they could play out differently. But Kiko going for a great engagement across that north corner. A siege tank from exit now joining the fray, but after that initial engagement, losing a lot of troops, critically he's losing this forward spoke as a defensive position. However, he's sneaking out, looks like a Marine, all the way in the backfield and around. And Kiko... Sieging up. Now, here's the other thing about Heartbreak Ridge. If you can box your opponent in to that natural expansion, that is a huge, huge advantage. Exit continuing to field troops up is able to siege on that forward position, but Kiko getting at least this initial two siege tanks to cut off Exit's ability to field units on this front spoke. So Kiko going to end up economically behind because he does not have that natural expansion saturated. You can see Exit's got that natural expansion uh, behind this, but he's got this front door advantage where he's got the three siege tanks, two Goliaths, and a Vulture. However, it is a close spawn location. A starport, another barracks being built. And oh, losing that barracks is huge, actually, because that's going to delay Exit's ability to get additional factories and break this contain. But I love the follow-up starport immediately upon building this, potentially to get drop ships to try to break out of this, bringing an SCV up to get a little bit of repair done to try to keep more siege tanks alive. And actually peeling through a couple of Kiko siege tanks. It's still four siege. So it's still Kiko actually having the two SCVs on this side as well. Kiko just now having that command center at half build. And I love Exit actually putting this Marine in that bottom right hand corner just in case Kiko is going to try to follow this up. He's like, okay, I got a bit of a contain. Now we just go take a quick third. And this is what I'm talking about Exit Game Sense. Uh, just really playing a couple steps ahead and just bunny hopping his way. I shouldn't use the word bunny hopping there. Let's not uh, bring Half Life into this. But hopping his way forward and able to use just kind of a, this northern edge to go and get that siege tank advantage, the siege tank number advantage to take out that front edge. So really poking away at this. However, Kiko bringing in some additional siege tanks along this southern edge. He wants to maybe, well, see if he brings an SCV uh, to mine that lower edge. One siege tank to the north, taking out a Goliath. This is going to be, again, hard to breach because it's on top of that spoke. Exit wisely moving up those siege tanks to get additional hits. 
and starting to press into this. Is Kiku going to try to break through this lower edge? Yeah, grouping up to break through. Now thinking thinking better of it. Is he? Actually, I'm wondering at any moment, is Kiku going to move to the south and try to press in around? Two, two Goliaths and a siege tank moving and forcing Kiko to reinforce his natural expansion, that natural expansion now running. But this is again where uh, Exit's game sense, I think he sometimes ends up so focused on that game sense, he falls behind. So despite having that command center up for a much longer period of time, even though he has a supply lead, a slight su supply lead, he's behind in the SCV count overall. So has, uh, so things evening up between the two of them, it is possible that he paused SCV just to make sure that he didn't break through, but sometimes I feel like he just falls behind a little bit in that macro because he's so, so zoned in on on his uh, incredible game sense. In the meantime, Kiko looking to just control this northern spoke. Exit is moving a handful of troops this direction. There are two siege tanks to engage, but you can... Wow, look at this. Exit just pocketing is initially pocketing the units. Exit making me look bad. I was going to say, he just avoiding that southern ridge somehow knew it was there without the scouting instead of running headlong into it. A nice mini trap from Kiko. Kiko moving in with some siege tanks as well to clear this northern ramp. And this is why Heartbreak Ridge makes for entertaining TVTs. And overall, I'm glad to see it actually in the map pool, in the map pool again. Three siege tanks grouping up to the north. I know it's like challenging for the rest of the, the players to play just because it can be a very stressful map, but I think it's entertaining. Kiko flooding out a nice response to this dropship with this siege tank. Flooding out some troops. The tank's sieging up. The SCV's going to go ahead and roll up. That's going to force an unsiege. A wraith being built here by Kiko on that opposite corner. He was mostly building that for scouting. But as soon as that wraith pops out, that dropship needs to move. It looks like a wraith was already in position, actually. So this dropship, not long for life. Let's see if it... Is it going to drop the siege tank to try to save something? No, I, I think... Look, it's just going to get taken out. That's unfortunate. So there's the siege tank drop. Is it going to be able to escape? Running to the north? No. <laughs> That's not... Oh, well. Uh, exit in the meantime has plopped down four factories is it uh, the two machine shops behind that Kiko just sitting at the two machine shops comparatively also has that rate getting something in the air to provide that additional little bit of scouting can be absolutely huge on this map again because of just all of the spokes so I like the Wraith moving to the north these two siege tanks currently undefended by Goliath let's see if exit can get some Goliath in position he's trying to cycle around with a single Goliath these two siege tanks look like they're gonna catch that reinforcement is the Goliath gonna be able to peek through is the question looks like they're just gonna engage wholesale and the Wraith now, yeah, pecking away freely. And you can just see the chaos that's happening all over the map currently. The Wraith working on these units at the 12 o'clock location. There's still the siege tank on the southern ridge that's been pounding troops that are sitting a little bit too south. As they're coming across this location, also a single siege tank right there. And so I feel like Kiko clearing a lot of the, uh, it looks like a lot of these tanks unseaging and pulling back. So Exit doing a good map of it, but a match of it. And oh, well, this is unfortunate. So I think Exit was hoping that he was gonna go grab that third in the bottom right-hand corner. Instead, Kiko grabbing uh, that base. Oh, that siege tank, not long for life. Doing a bit of good, uh, a decent bit of damage. A counter attack here from Wraith in the main from Kiko on Exit. Gonna get a handful of SCVs. And I don't see any Goliaths nearby in position. So it's gonna have to be, yeah, so Looks like Kiko getting a big economic lead here in the mid game. Because first of all, he's grabbing this third base in the upper right hand corner rather than the bottom right where the Marine was waiting for him. These Wraith able to poke in and deny mining at the main. And Exit having trouble getting in, dealing with these Wraith. It looks like he's finally got a turret up. Has a handful of troops. But what Kiko's done is he's just kind of played a really guerrilla, a guerrilla tactic style. Where it, it almost reminds me of like the old... You hear, you know, it's like the, the traps that people would lay. Where it's Robin Hood style drop uh, traps where it's like you pop up, shoot an arrow, and then dive underneath the cover or whatever. Uh, and it's like you're camouflaged at this stage. Not exactly. That's a bad metaphor. And also it makes Kiko seem like the hero, and I'm not favoring either player here. This is just a fun match altogether. I need to preface that. Part of the issue is, is it's like I like both these guys. And it's just a fun match. I am out of the commentary mode. I'm going to slip back into it. Talk about Kiko's playstyle. He's had all of these ambushes in between here. Losing myself. All of these ambushes that where he's just set a handful of units here and there along these corners and just laid these, these traps. And that's really played big for him in the mid game. That's allowed him to just, first of all, harass Exit quite a bit, force him to expend more troops, and allowed him, honestly, to take the economic lead. And you can see he's just keeps Exit keeps uh, losing troops here and there as he keeps falling into these little siege tank traps where he engages 
kind of along the corner, some troops get disengaged and then they just get splatted. And it's worth the, the handful of siege tanks where that's happening. Exit taking his bottom base. It looks like he's kind of blockading this in-between area a little bit. I was looking for where that explosion happened. Uh, in the meantime, Kiko taking a big economic lead. He's got 10, he's 10 SCVs up. He's a decent amount of supply up, but exit winding all the way up to the north. Kiko, you could see the flurry of combsats. I'm not sure if Kiko had eyes on it. Kiko re-engaging as this siege tank trapped to the north. The Wraith diving in. There's not a lot of Goliaths with this grouping. It looks like a turret attempting to be planted here so that exit can take position. It's just, this map is just an absolute clinic in map control in TVT. And I think actually, I'm trying to think, I, I feel like TVZ might be a little bit more entertaining, but it but TVT ends up being very entertaining on this map as a result of this all the way through. Kiko, with the single siege tank in position, exit still pressing forward, another engineering bay being built to the north. Level one weapons advantage for Kiko in this engagement, by the way. And the Goliath wandering a little bit too far forward, group repair on those SCVs. And while that's happening, Kiko just gonna cycle in underneath with several siege tanks. Some vultures, some goliaths in between. People on YouTube aren't going to understand this, but people on Twitch will. Ay, ay, ay. I guess if you know Artosis as well. I should minimize chat in the background. Anyway. Third gas up. Engineer Bay floating, but... It... The question now is, is can Kiko break into this with what he has in the nearby position? He's got those three wraith. He's got those three siege tanks. Versus the four siege tanks in that turret. You've also got reinforcements that would just get cut off. Now, keep in mind, Exit still has a path. Now he's starting to get those mines out. This is kind of what I wanted to see potentially earlier in this match. This is that mine coverage in the middle. The Wraith poking away at these siege tanks from the south. Let's see if they retreat to the turret. Yeah, they're going to go ahead, but one siege tank down. Not sure how long Exit's going to be able to hold this. The Vultures now moving in for Kiko. Going to be able to clear a lot of these troops out. Kiko with a sizable upgrade advantage. I believe that's going to continue. Exit trying to get that second armory up. He is working on armor two, but he's going to be... So Exit currently economically behind. He's behind in upgrades overall. Kiko, in kind of having these passive little groupings to engage here and there, has ended up ahead. You got six factories. Third machine shop being dropped. A drop being set up potentially for Kiko. He's got that drop ship. And Exit just... Yeah, keeps running into these siege tanks up on the high ground. And this is, yeah, got to control these spokes and try to find places where your opponent's not. And instead, Kiko, yeah, he loses these four siege tanks, but he did a lot of damage behind this. More mines being planted. And actually, now that I think about it, this map is incredible for Kiko's play style, where he wants to kind of play that game of attrition where his opponents come into him, I think, more favorably uh, sometimes. And he just, yeah, is doing a great job with this. See if these mines end up getting poked up. Kiko going to lose some of these siege tanks. They're not even getting shots off, you can see. As, again, it's darkness. Let me kind of give some vision here. You can see how it's just darkness as you go up into this ridge. And so it's just those siege tanks don't even get a shot as they get obliterated. Bit of a mistake right there. It looks like vulture on vulture action to the north. The vulture with the superior upgrades winning decisively. So Kiko already looking to press and deny this upper left-hand expansion. And look at this. The boldness of exit. So Kiko was looking to float an expansion in the bottom right. And exit's just like, forget that. I'm going to build an expansion down here. So rather than slicing the map uh, vertically, he's trying to slice it diagonally. Which is very brave because this is a long reinforcement route. And you can see Kiko's already like, no, I'm not going to let that stand. Is starting to push in troops. It looks like he's he sh is going to be able to... Shoot that gap much more rapidly than Exit's going to be able to reinforce. There's only two siege tanks, but there's an engineering bay left as a pseudo blockade to potentially pin some of these troops in. Exit regrouping. He's going to catch some of these reinforcements. SCVs on transfer getting wiped out. Kiko with the supply lead again. Level two weapons, level one armor versus just level one armor. That's a huge upgrade lead, but the Goliath's pushing forward. Trying to make Kiko think twice of it and maybe hoping to just strand some of those units in position, these Goliaths holding the high ground. Let's see if Exit overcommits. So engaging there, backing off. Kiko now opting to take the 12 o'clock. Finally took out that engineering bay, but this Exit's going to have to lift this command center off. 
This was just a little bit too bold in my opinion. So that siege tank down, canceling that, lifting that off. It doesn't look like there's any anti-air to take that command center out. So that command center should be able to retreat to a safe distance. A dropship now moving in without Goliaths or Wraiths to engage at this location. Not enough troops to really... So able to take one siege tank down. So it's not enough, I think, to hold or take this position. But it is enough to create a lot of harassment. One siege tank, a bunch of mines defending this otherwise. And actually, take it back. Maybe Exit can hold this. He's got this troop grouping back here. He just cleared this out, and there's only one siege tank left that's got to press up to get something done. This dropship moving to the north just, I guess, assumed to get scouting information. Exit going to end up losing it in the meantime, which I will free up some supply. Some scout... Some commsats from Kiko clearing out what's to the 12 o'clock location. The command center a little bit staggered out of position. Kiko may be a little bit concerned about that. Commsatting forward, the Goliaths distracted a bit by the vulture mines. And as a result, taking, I think, a little bit more damage than they needed to. Level 1 armor finally coming online. Three more, and I think this is the counter drop that I missed in the midst of this. Additional siege tanks pressing in. SCV's just getting obliterated as they spawn. This should be lifted off and pulled out. Kiko, with a big supply lead, has a sizable bank. However, if Exit, in the midst of this, can wipe this out, if he can take this base and just hold some territory, he might end up just, yeah, winning the long-term game. However, Kiko, with the close reinforcement points with the dropships, is getting an advantage out of this. Because he's just he got a close, just it's a long distance to try to reinforce. So it's an interesting gambit from Exit. I just don't know that it's going to pay off. Desperately trying to get an SCV out so he can preserve this command center. And still somehow holding. Wiping out the additional siege tanks. But how many, re, how much is Exit dedicating to this? And how much is it going to cost him? So now attacking that command center to the north. Is going to be able to get an SCV in position to repair this command center. There's still some mines in the way. SCVs are transferring to that bottom right-hand base. So really wants to try to try to mine there. Kiko working on some final upgrades here. Or I guess, not final upgrades, but level 3 weapons. Exit now taking his 6 o'clock. The main is mined out. The natural expansion is still well saturated. You got the 1 o'clock base and the 12 o'clock base for Kiko. So he's sitting on three bases. Mined out here for Exit. He's got... Uh, this expansion, this expansion, the 6 o'clock is just now coming online, so he's been behind a base. This is starting to get running, putting up a bunch of turrets. And I like what Kiko's doing in the meantime. He's like, okay, you're going to do that. I'm just going to do the exact same thing to you, but I'm going to do it much more comfortably because uh, you were just dedicating so much. Never mind. Ignoring that, dropping right into the main. And exit. He's got four factories. One of them was building a machine shop. Doesn't have a lot to deal with this. The... Looks like that armory isn't going to finish the upgrade. This could be critical. That is so much time to lose. The armory just barely... No, it doesn't finish. Big swing. Losing that much time on that upgrade is huge. That's going to make the next several minutes terrible for exit. Quite a match here. Vespin guys are being wiped out. Now, here's a benefit for exit. There's not a lot here in his base aside from that armory to lose. He's going to have to work against his own SimCity... To press in and open this up. Looks like he's going to end up losing an engineering bay as well. But Kiko critically behind a lot of this. The SCV's running in. Going to be able to linebacker. Unfortunately dying to his own tank splash fire. Level 3 weapons, level 2 armor. Versus level 2 weapons, level... Or level 2 armor, level 1 weapons. You can see where losing that armory was huge. And Kiko very comfortably grabbing this base in the upper left hand corner. So as far as a map split... Kiko getting the better part of it. Also, the command center going down and Exit's main. Exit's not out of it. Because, again, he can still... Well, he's going to end up losing that academy as well. Losing a lot of infrastructure. Having a huge difficulty pressing in to deal with the rest of this. It looks like he's going to ignore it for now. He's moving to that... He's starting to press into that 12 o'clock base while, this is, while his main's just kind of getting ravaged. Just letting that stand while he groups up some troops. A vulture pressing forward. With the rest of this. But again, this is just a piecemeal attack force. That I don't know that's going to be able to push through. And Kiko pressing the 200 supply mark. He's at 174 right now. Where Exit at practically half that. A big army in the middle. Now, on any other map, I would say this game's over. On any other map. But because of having to go into 
kind of these positions like this, it is possible that Kiko's just going to run or that uh, Exit might be able to get a little bit of... Def if he can just pocket this well and dedicate troops. But here's the thing. I don't see any army for Exit anywhere on the map. He's got several turrets. He's got two tanks down here. He's got what was... It looks like... What, a hand... Oh, never mind. Uh, several dropships and siege tanks. It looks like he's just like, you know what? Forget about all of the shenanigans in other locations. I'm just going to dropship all over the map. But that is putting him at a significant supply deficit. Siege tanks dropping on this expansion, which is just naked in the upper left-hand corner. More reinforcements trying to make their way forward. This is the exact sort of thing Exit needs to do to stay in this match. Create distractions, slow Kiko down, end up where these siege tanks end up grouped up and pocketed in so he can get his macro back up. It looks like he's actually even on the SCV count overall, but still way behind in supply. And again, critically behind in upgrades. Level 2 armor, level 1 weapons, and it's going to be a while before level two weapons even comes online. So some mining disrupted. Kiko going for a counterattack. Did those mines land? It does not look like it. He's pushing into the six o'clock. Now there's two bases that are on threat. The dropships moving across. Looks like they do have a handful of troops to respond to this. So exit right now with a more flexible army, but just in much smaller supply at much numbers, but he's making really good use of it. And this is what I was talking about. Just harassing at multiple locations. So despite Kiko having a huge supply lead, he's just having trouble dedicating the troops to the locations to just get a single-pronged attack and get it done. Kiko now dropping a bunch of turrets to try to seal this upper left-hand corner. Dropship's pulling back. I kind of like the dropship decision from Exit in the midst of this. Exit finally with a decent-sized army, regrouping, piling some of those into the dropship. Those Goliaths are going to make it difficult, so I... I'm hoping there'll be an engagement from the ground. Big amount of reinforcements pushing in from Kiko. Kiko behind this, sitting at, what is this? Factories, very staggered here. Five, six, seven. Seven factories overall. One problem on this map is, yeah, just having a spot to place factories. It looks like Exit has a handful of them as well. And you can just see kind of the map construction a little bit more, a little bit messy. So as far as the map control game, it looks like Kiko looking to get a counter drop in. Can I drop that? Oops. Ah! Hit it when I do this. Down, down. Hit the wrong thing. I'm just going to leave that in because I'm not going to recommentate. What is it? 27 minutes of this? Kiko pressing in. Bit of a sloppy commentary, but I'm still happy with it. Just going to leave it at that. Kiko pressing into exit 6 o'clock base. Wiping that out. Counter drop. Moving into the main. It's recovery. That's what we call it. Goliath trying to press into those siege tanks. Looks like Kiko easily able to handle that. Plus, he's knocked out the 6 o'clock. Exit looking for a counterattack in the middle of the map. So as things stand, though, Kiko still with the supply lead, still with the upgrade lead. As far as going for a long-term st starvation match, uh, he's in the lead right there. Exit looking to find somewhere to attack. Kiko trying to respond. And honestly, I feel like rather than responding to Exit, he might just pick up and keep attacking. Just reinforce way back here and maybe attack some other location. Don't even bother with the ridges in the middle. Because he's got all these siege tanks to the north. Exit losing a lot of these troops in the middle. <clears throat> this is very exposed in the bottom right at this stage. All of these siege tanks grouped up and attacking bottom right and then just cycling into bottom left. That would be game. Kiko slow playing it though. Oftentimes he likes uh, being, again, a little bit more passive, allowing his opponents to come to him. Sometimes that's beneficial. Sometimes that ends up uh, being detrimental. Fully upgraded mech now for Kiko. And exit bravely. Wow. Taking the middle of the map. Now keep in mind there's double gas here. They're at staggered distances. But they're still existent. So just trying to hold whatever he can. So he's going to be like, okay, let me just pile all my units into the middle. We'll try to hold the middle of the map. And manage things there. Kiko with a bunch of just honestly an over dedication of troops to the upper left. Exit trying to hold the middle with kind of a skeleton crew. There is a dropship nearby to potentially press into this. A bunch of siege tanks and goliaths waiting. But I would love to see, yeah, just kind of a Kiko to exit this. Exit. Press into the bottom right hand base, attack. Uh, maybe the 5 o'clock. Instead, it looks like he's trying to cycle into exit where he has the high ground advantage. My, yeah, just to, I'm going to do this from Kiko's perspective right here, just so you can see how difficult this engagement is. 
So you can see each comp setting here and there, but the comp set happening late, but just things walking into a complete lack of vision and just getting absolutely obliterated. It's like things pop up briefly and then they go back into the shadows and you end up losing troops. He's going to try again from the north. And you can just see that the siege tanks just pop into view for a half second, ex uh, splat something, and then go right back out of vision. Opposite corner, you can see where Exit just has a... I mean, with nothing else, it's kind of funny because it's like at this stage of the match, Exit's just like, I know Kiko's everywhere I'm not. So we're going to play the game that way. Let's go ahead and get the vision. I almost wish there was like some... If there was like some... Uh, maybe this is a future feature that... Because, you know, people are actively working on Brood War right now. But to have kind of this interesting vision overlay where you could have like like some sort of highlight green, some some sort of highlight blue that you could turn on. So you could basically see who has uh, what vision where to see kind of the more interesting features of maps like this and who can see what effectively. SCV is now transferring to the middle. Gas is not being grabbed just yet. Exit climbing to a within 20 supply uh, spacing. The armory is remaining silent right now, which is actually a bit detrimental. He's going for ship weapons instead. Maybe in preparation for a potential late game battle cruiser switch. We see several Wraith being produced in the bottom left hand corner. I'm not sure if Kiko got eyes on that or not. Kiko trying to respond by building a Valkyrie. He's getting additional starports up. So Exit trying to find ways to sneak back into this match. It looks like you want to do a quick Wraith switch potentially. I think maybe go for, for air overall. Going into air in this match, if you can find space to move into air because of all of the, the vision problems, you can see where that's significantly advantageous. Kiko still allowing this bottom right hand base to mine. I think he assumes that he would be running into an attack force like this. Exit trying to press forward into this 5 o'clock location with a handful of reinforcements having difficulty doing so. The Wraith could definitely help pressing through this location. Let's see if the Valkyrie... Looks like the Valkyrie's moving to the north rather than defending what I think Exit's true purpose for it is, which is to just break through this 5 o'clock. Once again, it's split map, and Exit has taken the middle. However, critically, level 3 armor just being started. The level 1 air weapons is going to delay things quite a bit. Yeah, there's Exit going ahead and clearing through those siege tanks at the 5 o'clock location. The Valkyries making their way forward, by the way. I think we've had this argument before, but I feel like Valkyrie waifu better than the medic waifu. That's from the Infested Cup cast. Just because Valkyries, they're out there. They're doing their best. Good comp set. Ah, loses vision right there. Two of them down. No! Whereas medics, sometimes they just watch the Marines die, right? They just watch them die so often. It's... It's really mean, cruel, kind of sadistic. Anyway. Siege tanks getting wiped out to the 5 o'clock location. Clever play from Exit. He's more or less evened up the supply count. And Kiko, as far as map control, I mean, yes, he has these northern spokes, but potentially in trouble because he might starve out from this stage. Continuing to create Valkyries, also adding a science vessel to try to even things up. So his main mind out, his natural expansion mind out, the upper right hand base mind out. He's down to two bases, the 12 o'clock in the upper left. In the meantime, Exit's mining the middle, which he's holding <clears throat> fairly effectively. Kiko now starting to press to this location, but otherwise Exit's effectively at three, technically three and a half uh, bases because this middle base has that double gas and a lot of resources. Kind of, well, I guess, you know, 10 mineral patches as opposed to the, what is it, the regular, I'm trying to remember what the regular is, I think eight. So it's not like a full. Another drop getting splatted in the main and was barely able to catch that corner. So thing is, so if Exit can hold on, despite being behind in upgrades, despite being kind of on the back foot in large portions of this match, he might end up winning it overall just because Kiko will starve out eventually. Kiko, while he has the upgrade advantage, needs to start pressing into Exit's basis, particularly this middle. He's got the supply lead. He's got the upgrade lead. Now, the time is now. Exit reinforcing. A lot of troops staged here at the natural expansion. Just a handful of mines and a single siege tank to defend right there. Exit reinforcing. Kiko just sending what looks like a piecemeal attack force of Goliaths. 
and siege tanks to engage from the north. Exit with a large amount of Wraith, holding them back initially. Looks like this gas might get denied. Additional comps. That's the Valkyries pressing forward. That's sending the Wraith in flight. Now Kiko engaging. So he's trying to bait those Wraith out. Now pressing forward with the rest of that attack force. The Wraith looking to engage in another location, but running into detection wherever they go. This is a lot of supply in Wraith that is costing ex exit because they are not siege tanks. They are not Goliaths. And since Kiko has, it looks like, plenty to deal with them. Just really getting swatted. So Kiko now try, now actually denying all these additional mineral patches. Let's see if Exit just abandons this space and transfers them perhaps to the 6 o'clock. If Kiko can press into this and take control, I believe he will end up winning this match overall. So this could be the defining moments of the match. Additional scans that Command Center now under fire. Siege tanks behind it. Yeah, I think Exit might be wise to just lift this Command Center off, use it to scout. Looks like he's going to try to engage instead. A defense makes sure it's being dropped on top of the armor superiority. The Wraith again trying to press forward. Not able to get on top. Actually able to bait some Goliaths back into the Siege Tank line. So Kiko losing some unit cohesion. That Science Vessel getting nearly picked off. Keep in mind, there's still some comps out, and I don't know if these Wraith have a lot of... No, they do not have a lot of energy left. So Exit with... Honestly, I don't know how he defended this. Doing a great job micro into this, losing several Wraith in that engagement, though, to the Valkyrie fire. So now Kiko, 12 o'clock location looking thin. Upper left-hand base still mining for him. The 6 o'clock base not mining for Exit as of yet. Exit down to 44 SCVs. Not that that'll matter. He just needs to hold the resources. Kiko reinforcing the long way around. Wants to get another shot at this. He's going to have a second science vessel in this grouping. Exit needs to get siege tanks to the front now. He does have them at the natural expansion. Not sure You might have uh, end up losing track of some of these siege tanks. Flurry of commsats on both sides. Some battle cruisers now being fielded from Exit. So trying to buy... It looks like he was just buying himself some time to get BCs. I think Kiko... At this stage of things, I don't know that he has the economy to do a battlecruiser switch. And if the battlecruiser is, especially if they can get that Yamato upgrade, can just hold in the midst of this, yeah, I think Kiko might end up being in some serious trouble. However, Exit's macro falling behind here. Kiko near 200 supply. Exit, again, around the 122 mark. Kiko... Diving in past this gap, the battle cruisers are not in position. I think this is going to be Kiko's moment to retake this base. Now the question is, how many Goliaths end up preserved in this attack? The Goliaths pressing in, able to wipe out a lot of these siege tanks. Let's see if the SCVs are able to evacuate. Looks like this command center is just going to straight up get annihilated. Exit finally pulling out with those SCVs. So Kiko has managed to seize the middle. However, we got four battle cruisers incoming. These are, I think there's Charon Booster upgrade on these Goliaths. Six battle cruisers incoming with some siege tanks. Battle cruisers providing both beef and scouting. The Goliaths need to be preserved. So Kiko has managed to take this base out. He's trying to distance mine with some SCVs. Retreating. And this is enough BCs to just press through those Goliaths. Even with... Yeah, you can just see how quickly they swat that. I don't think those are Charon... Yeah, they're not Charon Booster upgraded. And Kiko calling GG, realizing he couldn't seize the middle. So Exit, despite being back a huge amount of supply, able to turn it around with a battle cruiser swap that Kiko could not respond to in the late game. What an incredible game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That was a fun one. I wish I could... I wish you could pin YouTube videos a particular way. Anyway, everyone should watch this one. This was a good one. Thanks, uh, thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.